Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany and today we are going to be watching a classic screwball comedy. Okay, so before we get into the film, I wanted to kind of explain a little bit about what a screwball comedy is. So I'm going to take out my notes. <laughs> Yeah, I take out my notes for this one. A screwball comedy, I feel like I'm saying that so many times. A screwball comedy is a subgenre of comedy that was popularized in the early 1930s and thrived until the early 1940s. And essentially it's characterized by a dominant female character and a male character whose masculinity is challenged in some way. And these characters are depicted through a witty, fast paced dialogue and plot. Now other features of a screwball comedy include slapstick comedy, social class issues, themes of courtship and marriage and farcical situations. And one other thing that I found really interesting is that a screwball, the, the term screwball actually is used in baseball when a pitcher throws the ball at a certain angle or at a very fast paced. So it's kind of a fast and erratic and it throws the batter off. So this film is essentially like the baseball being thrown at you in a very erratic and fast manner. I guess that that's what people in the 1930s thought was you know, entertainment at the time. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what a screwball comedy is. Now on to the film. So the film that we're going to be watching today was released in 1936, directed by Gregory LaCava, starring William Powell, Carol Lombard, and Alice Brady. Yes, everybody, I'm talking about my man Godfrey. I'm so excited to watch it with all of you today. Shout out to all of you who recommended it in the comments. So a quick synopsis on the film. It says a scatterbrained socialite hires a vagrant as a family butler. But there's more to Godfrey than meets the eye. Sounds really intriguing. <laughs> so some interesting facts that I found about this movie was that the main love interest, Carol Lombard and William Powell, were actually married for about two years and then they divorced. And then three years later, they came back and they made this film. So I'm excited to see their, their chemistry and their character dynamic and how that has kind of influenced their characters. I'm really excited to see that. One other thing I wanted to mention was that this film, sorry, I'm. I'm consulting my my notes. <laughs> so this film was nominated for six Oscars at the Academy Awards in 1937. It didn't win any of them, um, not that I saw. But this film and Frank Capra's film from 1934, It Happened One Night, are both considered to be prime examples of a screwball comedy. Um, and unfortunately, because I couldn't find It Happened One Night anywhere, I decided to watch this film instead. So yeah, so let's just, get right into this film. I'm super excited to dive in. But before we do, y'all already know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to get cozy, get your snacks and your drinks, and let us get in to My Man Godfrey. Ooh, I like this beginning scene. It kind of reminds me, um, for those of you who have like a Roku TV, it reminds me of like the Roku screensaver. That is a dump, wow. Hello, Duke. Well, Mike, any luck today? Well, I figured out a swell racket and everything was going great until the cops came along. Too bad it didn't work. If them cops um, would stick to their own racket and leave honest guys... Why is William Powell a hunk? Uh, I'm sorry. He's very handsome. Wow. What the blue eyes. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of, um, oh my god, I don't remember his name. If you guys have ever seen either Downton Abbey or The Leap Year, his name is like Matthew something. And he's like dark features with like blue eyes or like green eyes. He's like a British actor. Matthew Good. So William Powell reminds me of Matthew Good. I said, how would you like to make five dollars? Five dollars? Five dollars. Well, I don't want to seem inquisitive, but what would I have to do for it? Oh, all you have to do is go to the Bordeaux Fritz Hotel with me, and I'll show you to a few people, and then I'll send you right back. Like an animal? No matter what my board of directors advise, I think you should be spanked. George, do something. You in the habit of hitting ladies? Maybe. I'm he in the habit even of hitting hit. gentlemen also. That'll Wait a second, you. he didn't George, even hit her. Do Hold anything? on. Oh, he said that she should be spanked. But she, he didn't touch her. You don't go up to someone and say, hey, do you want to make a quick $5? 
Let me show you off to people? The freak? But you'd win if you got back first with me. It'd be awfully nice of you, but I don't like to ask. Let's beat Cornelia. He wouldn't be asking too much? <laughs> see, I've got a sense of curiosity, just the same as you have. Oh. I'd really like to see just what a scavenger hunt looks like. But I told you. Yes, I'm uh, still curious. Well, come on. Remember when we watched Gone with the Wind a couple weeks ago? I never, I read this, but I never said it in the video. But during the filming, uh, Clark Gable had an affair. The affair he had was with Carol Lombard, who he ended up marrying. And that was maybe like three years after this movie came out. But they were married from, I think, like 1939 to 1942. But Carol Lombard actually passed away in a tragic plane crash when she was young, I think like 36. And Clark Gable, her husband at the time, he never got over it. So like Carol was like the love of his life, like his, the one that he loved, that Clark loved the most out of his like five wives. And he's actually buried next to her. I don't remember where they're buried, but they're buried next to each other. So I just think it's so interesting, kind of the connection there and the historic, like the historical connection. But yeah, it, it was really sad to read that she died tragically in a plane crash. She has a coat. And is this just all for sport? Like for fun? Oh, oh baby. <laughs> I feel like people with a lot of money do the weirdest things. Like, the more money you have, the more eccentric you are, you know? Like, you just, they just have really weird ways of entertaining themselves. Wow, okay, so... Wow, um, there's a lot going on in this scene. So I, I kind of already can see the the fast paced element of these of this film. Like they're kind of talking over each other over the noise, and then they're talking really fast. And so you're kind of trying to keep up, but at the same time, it's kind of entertaining. <laughs> like I, I, it's it's very um, keeps you on your toes. Are those biscuits your own? No one else has claimed them. I must ask that question because uh, one group uh, tried to fool the committee the early part of the evening by putting false whiskers on one of their own group. May I, uh, may what? I, uh, no, it's a pleasure. Oh, he just like <laughs> touched his chin. I could use a job if you've got one lying around loose. Can you bottle? Bottle? Yes, we're fresh out of bottles. The one we had left this morning. I mean. They're calling for you in the jade room. Don't you want your nice cup? Tell them to keep that cup. I don't want it. Carol Lombard and William Powell do have a sort of chemistry with each other that I haven't really seen, you know, in other films like this. Like it's, it's, you can definitely, f you feel that there's, there's been something, you know, like at one point. So I'm excited to see how it, how it continues, but I like this film so far. She wants to hire this man as a butler. Why not? He might make a very good butler. I'm sure I'd make a very good butler. And where do I get my five bucks? 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 What's he talking about? What's he talking about? Five bucks. Oh, I promised him five dollars. Well, give him the five dollars and the bucks too and get him out of here. Oh, wow, that's so interesting. So she didn't know what he meant when he said five bucks. Is that like a, like a, like a language thing between the classes? That's interesting. Good morning. Good morning. I'm the new, uh... Yes, I know. You're the new butler. Ooh, he cleans up How nice. Do you know? There's one every day at this hour. They're dropping in and out all the time. Well, Cupid, this is your big opportunity. Shall I take it to her? You might as well know the worst. I want to warn you, she sees pixies. Pixies? You know, the little men. Who has a whole jug of tomato juice just lying around in their refrigerator? Do any of you like tomato juice? I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but tomato juice is gross. What's your name? Godfrey. Are you someone I know? We met last night at the Waldorf Ritz. Oh, yes. You were Mrs. Maxton's party at the bar. Why did they keep playing that same tune over and over again? Why do they? Didn't you hear it? 
Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do, in a way. These films with sound, I feel like, have only been around at this point for, I don't know, maybe five to ten years. So I feel like they're really experimenting with sound here because if you you can hear, like, the orchestra in the back, but then also these beautiful crystals. And I feel like they really had an, a chance to explore with sound and what certain things sounded like in the film. And I just think that that's just from like a time stance, like it's, it's interesting to see, you know, what was the, the new big thing in movies for them, you know? Because nowadays it's like, you know, all that stuff that you use to make things, you know, perfect. But back in the day, it was just, you know, mixing sounds together. So... It's really interesting. I think we should get our help from employment agencies. Well, I don't know, but what I agree with Cornelia. Whatever are you all talking about? Anyway, I need to see you. Oh my gosh. Look, is that funny? Oh, he says. I'm right there with Godfrey, like, what is going on here? Like, what are you doing? The madness. Huh? I beg your pardon. She is running game. I'm sorry, but I didn't quite hear. Her. I said I'm not really having a smile. <gasps> <laughs> she just, she just kissed him. Oh my God. He is your butler. What are you doing? No, oh, you. You, you can't come in here. Why not? It's our house, isn't it? After all, one room is just like any other room. Oh, but don't you think it's rather indecent of you to order me out after you kiss me? After I kiss you, no. did you say? You it's kissed him. This morning you were sitting on my bed, now I'm sitting on yours. But you want me to remain on here as butler, don't you? Oh, of course. And I want to justify your faith in me by being a very good butler. And in time, perhaps filling the void created by the death of your late lamented Pomeranian. Oh, I've forgotten all about him. He had fleas anyway. Besides, you're different. You use big words and you're much cuter. Mm -hmm. May I tell you a story? I'd love it. What an interesting dynamic. So she's like, she is now, we know at this point, she likes him. And he's not interested at all in her. Not like at all. That's a very pretty tune, Carlo. What's the name of it? Oh, oh, that's the name, too. I thought it was just the words. I like it because the words are all the same. It makes it so easy to remember. That's probably why the Star Spangled Banner is so confusing. Nobody seems to know the words. <laughs> yeah, I'm still confused as to as to Carlo's role in, in this family. Like, is he just... Is he like a... I just feel like the mother is very close to Carlo, more so than any of the other family members. And he's her protege. And I feel like because this is the 1930s, and like I said last week about the Hayes Code, I feel like that was kind of a way to get around the fact that the mom might be having an affair with Carlo, but they weren't allowed to explicitly convey that. So it's just kind of more hushed. But I mean, I feel like, why would your protege be living in the, like, why would you spend so much time with with your protege and why would he be living in your house with your family? I don't know. It's a very interesting relationship. Wait a minute. What's the trouble? Godfrey Park, you old mug. Oh, do you know Godfrey? Know him? We went to Harvard you together. You went to Harvard? I'm afraid you've confused me with someone else, sir. I'm Smith. What's the idea? I'll turn to it later. And Mr. Gray never oh, complained. Oh, so there's a bit of a when? secret. No, Ooh. I have very few complaints about Godfrey's work. I'll tell you tomorrow. It's one day off. You're sure you want me to tell all this, Godfrey? He is pulling the story completely out of his butt. Well, the only kind I could take toward a faithful servant. But Godfrey decided in favor of his wife and five children. Five children? Look at five. his face. My, my. He's like, five children? What's his wife? Okay, so this whole story that Gray told was just a cover because there is a secret that is yet to be revealed about Godfrey. Listen, everybody, I, I want to make an announcement about something. Come in. Go ahead. Come what are you going to announce? I want to announce my, my, my engagement. I'm going to be married. You're going no, to be married? I'm to well, well, you'll find out soon enough. Not Charlie Van Ruppel. Yes, Charlie Van Ruppel. Where is he? Oh, he's down at the bar. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 
she's not about to get married to a man that she's not in love with. Godfrey, here I am. Yeah. So you've turned up at last, eh? I began to think you'd fallen down the kitchen sink. Sorry, I'm late. You know, the Parks were never educated to face life. We've been puppets for ten generations. And? Tommy, it's surprising how fast you can go downhill when you begin to feel sorry for yourself. Wow. And boy, did I feel sorry for myself. I wandered down to the East River one night thinking I'd just slide in and get it over with. Oh, wow. But I met some fellows living there on a city dump. Here were people who were fighting it out and not complaining. I never got as far as the river. Oh, my God. So Godfrey isn't some random man forgotten. He's like, he, ha he, came, he comes from a rich family. And I guess he must have, like, run away. What? But I guess he found himself again in this, in the city dump and, and with men who are living, you know, um, not so glamorous lives, but are still somehow finding happiness in life. And so he like kind of took on a new persona as Godfrey Smith. And so lived and also lived among the men that lived in the city dump. Wow. That is oh, how how interesting what a what a plot twist like that's crazy what does he do on his day off he never tells me oh he's probably sitting somewhere with some woman on his lap oh i can't bear it please don't <laughs> is she in love with him too <laughs> is the maid in love with him too oh molly i know exactly how you feel oh my god Wow, Godfrey is the man right now. Thing. I'm all right. What is it? What's troubling you? Do you remember the pearl necklace I got for my birthday last year? Well, yes. What about it? It's disappeared. Maybe somebody stole it. Will you fill your gob full of chicken and keep out of this discussion? I was only trying to help. We don't need your help. Dude, all Carlo does is just like sit in the house, play loud music, and eat all the time. He's kind of like me a little bit. <laughs> Did she think that she was going to get there before then? Come in. Dang, they're just ripping up the bed. I have to still sleep on that, you know. Well, they're not here. They must be there. Just a minute, lady. What makes you so sure they ought to be under the mattress? Why, I, I read that that's where people put things when they steal them. Uh-uh, dude. She's the one who planted it there. You see, Tommy, there are two kinds of people. Those who fight the idea of being pushed into the river and the other kinds. One of it. One thing I discovered was that the only difference between a derelict and a man is a job. Sit down over here and rest your weary bones. Let me tell you why I wanted to talk to you about it. Well, I'll listen, but I still think that you belong in a psychopathic ward. Well, you may be right, but let me tell you my plan. And listen with both ears. I love that he was able to kind of find himself again in a place where you think... War <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, it is a really cool idea to think that he found himself again in a place where the men are supposed to be forgotten. So, you know, and all this trash, like, nobody wants trash anymore because, you know, you throw it away, you don't want it. But somehow Godfrey was able to find himself in a place essentially where things are supposed to be forgotten. That is so, that is so interesting. I never, it never clicked until just now. Are you going back to her? To whom? That Indian woman. Indian? Oh, <laughs> she was just a fabrication. Oh, then you weren't married to her. No, she was just a product of Tommy Gray's imagination. Then there wasn't any. No. Well, then there couldn't have been five children. <laughs> well, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> Their chemistry is so natural, and it makes it so much fun to watch. Like I said, I love when two characters or two actors have really good chemistry, it, it makes their characters more believable. Please, Godfrey, you can't go with Cornelia. But I didn't say I was going anyplace with Miss Cornelia. I know, but you will. She always gets her own way. She makes everybody do oh, just as she likes. Please don't cry again. But why should you care whether I meet her or not? I 
I do care. That's why it's Cornelius, the one who doesn't care. But I think I should decide those things for myself. Oh, Godfrey, I don't want to be annoyed, but I... Oh. Oh, see here, you... Wow, she is just letting him bob her head around. Look at that. That's... That has got to be bad for her neck. As I'm watching this, I feel like there's not that much of a a difference or a a disconnect from the way people were back in the 30s. Now, mind you, there was a different culture and there was a different way of life, but it's just I feel like there's just such a disconnect. And I think that's also why a lot of people maybe might be turned off to watching some of these older films because it just feels like it was so long ago, but it really wasn't. And for their time, they lived normally. There was nothing grandeur or or eccentric about the way they lived. Like they were normal people living normally in their time. And I think that we don't think like that when we're looking back in history. We think like, we kind of almost look down, I guess, almost look down on them because we're like, well, you know, now 90 years later, we're all sophisticated. But I just don't really think that we're that disconnected from our, our past, you know? So it's just, it's interesting to watch it. And, and realize that. Because I feel like a lot of this feels very modern. Hey, don't go away! Oh, Godfrey! No, I know you love me! I do not. I'm very confused. How did she, how did she come to that conclusion that Godfrey loves her when he put her in the shower? I'm really trying to think. You don't mind if we have a little chat, Carlo, old boy? You know, for some time, Carlo, I felt it. Did he just throw him out the window? <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, at least somebody did it. You see, with the aid of Tommy Gray, I was able to transmute a certain trinket into gold. And then into stock, and then back into pearls. You win. What is this all about, anyway? I put the pearls under Godfrey's mattress. Thank you, Miss Cornelia. I wanted you to say that. And so, good day. Oh, they made it. They made the dump into like a swinky oh, nightclub. I like it. Hey, business looks pretty good tonight. Wow, that's awesome. So he gave all those men jobs. Wow. Go Godfrey. Go Godfrey. I've ever met. Ex-butler. Fired. I quit. I uh, felt that foolish feeling coming on again. You mean Irene? What do you know about that? Well, nobody knows anything about her love except all of Upper New York and Lower Manhattan. Guess I got out just in time. Why don't you marry the girl? Did he just kind of admit to the fact that he is into Irene? Did, did that just come out of his mouth? Oh my god, so he does love her, even though he didn't say it. He still loves her. Oh, Godfrey, company has come. Hello. What are you doing here? Yes, what are you doing here? Don't let him off the hook. Oh. You must leave at once, do you hear me? Well, we got rid of her in a hurry. This film kind of reminds me of the film we watched on Saturday, The Philadelphia Story. I feel like it borrows a lot of the screwball comedy themes, or maybe it... it, it actually was a screwball comedy but like the wittiness of the dialogue and then the strong female character or the independent female character like like those tropes i feel like were very present also in the philadelphia story and i really like i like the wittiness of the dialogue it makes like i said in the last video it makes these films so interesting to watch i really like it a lot oh i think it's very cute but we'll have to change the wallpaper <laughs> Said we. we. Oh, I don't like green. <laughs> She's like, I'm marrying you. you it's one you didn't have the foresight to bring a minister and a license. It's funny, I never thought of that. May I come in? Oh, Mr. Courtney. Uh, Mr. Gray said there are a couple of people over here who wanted to get no married. No way. <laughs> are you it? Yes, we're it. Can you marry us? Wow, without this license? is happening without right a, now. May get me into a lot of trouble, but uh, I guess I've known your family long enough to take a chance. Right there. Yeah. Well, now, uh, join hands, please. No, the right hand. Oh. Stand still, Godfrey. It'll all be over in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's it! Oh, wow. Wow. I liked 
liked that film. I thought it was really, it was really cute. It was funny. It had its moments. It was definitely fast paced, coming at me at all different angles. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed that film. I thought it was really good. I loved the chemistry between William Powell and Carol Lombard. Like you could feel their chemistry. And the plot, I definitely feel like there were some farcical situations in that, but overall, I really enjoyed that film. And I think I'm going to give it like a 7 out of 10. I think it was really good. It was def it definitely had its moments where I was kind of lost, but I think that was just because of like the cultural differences. And so some of the jokes were kind of like went right over my head. But for the most part, I thought it was really entertaining and I really liked it. And now I think I might have to watch another screwball comedy. <laughs> All right, everybody, that does it for this video. If you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everybody. So next week we are going to be watching, I would say another really big film on this channel. I want to tell you all now because I want you to go and watch it, but we are going to be watching Casablanca. I'm so excited to watch this film. I have never seen it before and I've been holding out. Please go watch it. I know that there are a few places online for free that you can watch it or if you have memberships where the movie is. Just go watch it and then come back and watch the review and we'll talk about it. I'm so excited. Please bring all of your Casablanca movie facts or insight. I love it. I love when you guys share your movie insight with me. That's one of my favorite things in the comments. So I'm really excited to see what you all have to say about the film. And I'm also really excited to see this film. But until then, thank you so much for watching the videos. As always, if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comment box below. Please stay safe and healthy out there and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye, everybody.